Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of the Maya tutorial. We're focusing on the modeling toolkit and the second part here in modeling toolkit. It's going to be mainly the components toolkit aspects. So we're going to make a cube by just clicking up on the cube. We're going to scroll in, zoom in here. And we're going to start by focusing on extrude. So we're going to right click, or if we want, we can go over here and select faces. Click the face we want to extrude. Hit the extrude button. And here we can either manually extrude it by sliding this thickness here and this this will work as well in the z translate and also we can do offset so if we want to expand it out so you could use this if you kind of know the numbers that you want to deal with also you could add divisions so kind of the points in between but say we just want to leave this all kind of normal standard stuff and we're just going to put it back to zero and we're just going to manually extrude it out so say we wanted to create like a torch. Maybe we'll extrude this up, hit another extrusion, and from here we could, uh, if you wanted, you could expand it out in different directions using these, or if you want, you could just grab it from the center and extrude it out like that. And then once you have that in place, you'd hit extrude again and pull it up. This would be kind of like a Minecraft torch, sort of. And we're going to extrude again. One thing you do want to make sure you don't do is if you accidentally hit extrude twice like that, it'll look like you didn't extrude twice. But if you go in here and go to edges and select the edges, oh, we have that snap on. So let's let's go back in here and turn snap off. If you look in here, there actually is two extrusions. You'll start getting weird geometry like that. So we're just going to undo that. Back to here and we have our extrusion. And we're gonna, this time we're gonna extrude inwards. And you can hit the R tool for scale and use extrusions that way. But actually I'm gonna turn snap off again. Extrude it in, extrude one more time, and then pull it down. And there we go, we have a basic little torch. We could add a little flare to that if we wanted to select these edges, go into edge component or right click, double click all the edges expand it out and maybe we want to bring this in a little bit too let's scale it in but yeah, it's super basic so that's the extrude tool let's take the same object and work on the next tool the bevel tool so we hit bevel it'll automatically bevel everything since we didn't select anything specific from here we could add additional segments so it's making nice round edges or we could go here and change the amount of bevel. And the other option you can have is if you don't want to move over here, you can use the middle mouse key and clicking that and holding it and sliding back and forth. So that's one way to approach the bevel. Say we didn't want to bevel everything. Let's undo that bevel. Go back to the original. Say we just wanted to bevel this edge all the way around. Let's double click that edge. Remember, we're selecting edge components and then hit bevel. Now we're only beveling that one particular edge. And I could choose the different segments. There we go. So a nice round edge like that. So say you want to add, maybe bevel all of this stuff down here. A quick way to do a selection is we're going to go to edge and do a drag selection. But I don't want to select these down here, so I'm just going to hold control. See the little minus icon showing up? We're going to deselect those. And then I'm going to hit bevel again. And I'm just going to increase the amount of segments of it. Increase the amount so it's nice and even. So now we have kind of a smooth wooden handle or something like that. Okay, let's go on to the next. We're going to do bridge. Uh, let's see. With bridge, I'm going to say i wanted to create a component like a extra detail down here on the bottom but i forgot to connect it and everything let's let's make a cube bring it down here say this was a component we had down here and we wanted to bridge these two so we would bring them together like this and then combine them and then select this face right here in this face and hit bridge and apparently that didn't work because these two objects are too different so 
that's a good example of what not to do. Let's use a new example then to do a bridge. So let's see, we'll create a cube here and then duplicate control D and move the cube here. Let's put it at an angle like this. So a bridge might be, maybe you wanted to make like a, a flying buttress or something like that. Let's take these two objects, combine them and then select this face and this face and hit bridge. There we go. See how it connected those two? And we can do lots of cool stuff with these. We could add divisions, we can twist, or we could change, say we want to do a bend like the buttress. See it's linear or bend are two different types. And from here we can twist it if you wanted to. Let's put that back to zero. We could taper it, like flare it out or draw it in. That's pretty useful too. We can also, oh, let's put that back down to one, not zero. We could also add more divisions or less divisions. There we go. Like if we want super smooth, pretty higher poly, or if we wanted to make it really low poly, something like that. And remember, you can snap back and forth between these different types. And then offset is another thing you could do if you wanted to kind of twist between the two shapes. We'll see how that looks if we add divisions and if we add some taper. So that's kind of interesting. Offset apparently does not work very well if you're doing those two. So you're gonna end up with some weird stuff if you combine too many of these. But I'd recommend doing a curve with no offset. It's gonna look nice. And then if you add multiple divisions, there we go. Remember, we have to bring these back. Sometimes zero isn't the correct number, but we want to put this back to a one. And I'll put twist to zero. There we go. So that's some other great things you can do. Okay. And let's move on to divisions. Let's create another cube. Move it over here. Zoom into it. So divisions are super simple. You can just, if you add divisions, it's basically subdividing the surface, but it's not smoothing. Remember we did smooth. Let me show the difference between divisions and smooth. So here's a divided cube. Let's take the same size cube, pretty much identical cube, and we're gonna hit smooth and add divisions to a smooth. So look at the difference you get by doing a smooth with divisions and just plain divisions kind of a Rubik's cube versus sort of a soccer ball shape or something. So it kind of has those corners. But yeah, so that's the difference. Here's a smooth from the mesh one, mesh tool. And here's add divisions from the components tool. And just to note, when I added those components over here in the inputs panel, it actually showed my divisions right here. So it's sort of another way to access those divisions. See, when I slide these up, those divisions are actually showing up here as well. But yeah, so that's the end of the component segment of the modeling toolkit. If you liked everything here, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if there's something else you'd like to see, just comment below and subscribe if you like to see future videos. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye.